I want you to hit me as hard as you can. M. Night Shyamalan, how does one go from being proclaimed the next Spielberg to being the most associated name with shitty movies other than Adam Sandler? If Hollywood careers were to go by baseball rules, M. Night would have struck out a very long time ago. But nope, his career is still trudging along after a good six or so strikes. And with his return to horror in the newfound footage flick, The Visit, audiences are waiting to see if he's pulled off a seventh or if he has finally made a comeback. But it'll be hard to fail as hard as M. Night's last crack at the cinematic bat, which was the 2013 sci-fi flick, After Earth. But it wasn't M. Night who took the blame for the movie's bombing. It was the film's star, Will Smith, who wrote the story for this flick as a way to give his son Jaden a shot at being a leading man. But for the first time in perhaps forever, audiences were not at all interested in seeing Big Willie take on aliens, let alone Little Willie. And that combined with the all-around terrible reviews led Smith to declare After Earth the most painful failure of my career. So let's push all this negativity aside and give this movie a chance. After all, legendary astronaut Buzz Aldrin said it was action-packed and touching but then again he's also said that when the caretakers at the nursery home wipe his ass so you better trust my word over his Ooh, how about that? so we open a thousand years into the future where we find out the inhabitants of earth have moved on to a new planet after a series of environmental disasters makes the planet uninhabitable could one of these disasters have been the happening what no but on the new planet of Nova Prime, they run into the new problem of rejected bugs from Starship Troopers. And only one man can take them on. General Cypher Rage, played by Will Smith, who has taught himself to never feel fear. Which you can tell because he's obviously not afraid of people laughing at his name. His son Katai, played by Jaden Smith, works hard to follow in his father's footsteps, but finds that he just can't. So Cypher decides to stop being such a hard ass to his son and take him along on his last mission before retirement. And we all know action heroes in movies enjoy a smooth, orderly mission before they retire- Just, just kidding. kidding. Their ship hits an asteroid attack and crash lands in the remnants of Earth, with Cypher and Katai being the only remaining survivors. Do you know where we are? No, sir. This is Earth. No, 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 Will. It's pronounced Earth. So with Cypher's legs both broken, it's up to Katai to make his way across the uninhabitable terrain of Earth so he can send a distress beacon and get them back home. But along the way, he's got to deal with mutated animals, below zero temperatures, and the mile-long grocery list of things that are wrong with this godforsaken movie. First off, let's talk about how people talk in this movie. Apparently, moving from one planet to another has merged people of all nationalities together, which means they now speak in an accent that lies somewhere between Elmer Fudd and Forrest Gump. There's a sign back there. Authorized personnel only. Why didn't you read that? Now how the fuck can I take your movie seriously when every character speaks like that? Not to mention, the dialogue doesn't help any. As Will and Jaden talk to each other in some sort of new age gobbledygook bullshit that suggests all the books in the future have been replaced by self-help manuals. Recognize your power. This will be your creation. The only place that fear can exist is in our thoughts of the future. And you think having an actor as charismatic as Will Smith could anchor this movie any, but he's directed to have a line delivery just as flat as his fucking hair. Apparently, when someone loses the ability to feel fear, they also lose the ability to feel any other emotion whatsoever. And as much flack as Gene Smith has received for his performance here, I can honestly say he does and doesn't deserve those bad reviews. Compared to General Cardboard, he actually has emotions, which he expresses very vividly. But out of all the actors here who have to carry off the stupid future act, he comes off the worst. The kid sounds like he's got rubber bands around his tongue. She called out for you, she called your name, and you weren't there because you never did. And it doesn't help that when his whiny shit of a character comes across danger, he either throws a rock at it or yells at it to leave him alone. Leave me alone! And when he does overcome his fears, you don't buy it for a second. Oh, and when he furrows his eyebrows, his forehead looks like Emperor Palpatine's. Good. But I haven't even told you the real problem I've got with this movie. That Will Smith bases story off an episode of I Shouldn't Be Alive. About a daughter who has to seek help for her father after he crashes their snowmobile. So why the fuck did they have to transfer that story a thousand years into the future? Why the hell not just make a movie about that story? And save yourself all this sci-fi bullshit. 
All it does is detract from the central conflict. A kid against the forces of nature is a great story, but nope, M. Knight and Will Smith just have to force all this lame CGI and nonsensical future speak dialogue onto what could have been something simple and effective. And as a fun bad movie, After Earth does give you plenty to laugh at with how far these filmmakers go up their own asses. But for the most part, it's just dull. So the only twist ending to this M. Night movie is that even when he's given someone else a script, he still manages to fuck it up the only way he knows how. What a twist! <laughs> well, we still got a good 985 years to go before the end of the millennium, so that gives us plenty of time for another round of the awfully good drinking game. Take a shot or drink every time Will tells Jaden to take a knee. Take a knee. Take a knee! Take a knee. Oh, I know some other things Jaden could take. Take some acting lessons. Take your Twitter account down. Take that fucking bat suit off. Will or Jaden have another flashback? And as bad as Jaden's flashbacks are, Will's flashbacks are even worse. No. They invent another made up future speak term. I'm gonna grab some rag time. We're not going down with bingo power. Your Navi band is our soul means of communication. And blah 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 techno crap blah, blah blah. And take a double shot when Will Smith denies permission. Are you asking me or telling me? May I go to my room, sir? Denied! Sit down! Oh, if only Will was able to say that to the audience in this movie. What? This movie is terrible! I'm gonna get a refund! Denied! Sit down! Yes, sir. And on the nudie watch, unless you're thrilled by the sight of Jaden Smith's spandex ass, then there's no titillation to be found in this flick. Unless, of course, Zoe Kravitz wants to flash us a little sup- <laughs> Oh, sweet Christ! Oh, never mind! I take that back! Oh, I will never watch Mad Max Fury Road the same way again! <laughs> on the enjoyableness continuum scale from Boulder Bruce, After Earth elicits a big, oh, hell no, and lands on a four out of ten. Will Smith was right when he said yeah, parents just don't understand. understand that their sons aren't nearly as talented as them. I'm Jesse Shea for JoeBlow.com, and I hope you enjoy- Oh, hold on, someone's at the door. Oh, uh, hi, Buzz Aldrin. Look, sorry about that nursery home joke. It's all in fun- Oh! Oh, get off me! Oh, God, stop destroying me with your moon man strikes! everyone, Jesse Shade here from Awfully Good Movies. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see me take on more good bad movies, click on any of the links you see here, or subscribe to see this show alongside all the great content that we offer here at JoeBlow.com. And remember, I love you. Uh, wait, that sounded wrong. But I do love you though.